All right, big day, big knife. It's probably not quite as big as the package looks here, but let's get it open. This is the Demco 8020.5 used in, for the open. It's got the shark's foot. Um, great knife for these types of package opening, utility cuts and so on. And uh, yeah, this, uh, this knife comes by way of the Demco Facebook group. It is a Demco custom and it's a, uh, a very unique one to say the least. So I think this may be the most expensive knife I've ever bought. Um, let me take this off the camera real quick to make this get the entry here and do it safely. And um, it is uh, an exciting one. This knife was sold over the table at uh, the Demco knife, um, not the, the Demco table at the, um, oh, the Na Nashville Knife Show recently. This is a fairly new Demco Custom. And I have my other Demco Customs out here ready for comparison. <clears throat> but let's see what we got. This is a pretty exciting one here. That is a wild knife. Now it's about 28 degrees out right now, so this thing's pretty cold. Um, I am going to let it thaw off a little, so it's just, uh, it feels a little funny, but, um, you know, I'm a little uh, in awe right now as I expected to be on this knife. It is uh, a real work of art there. Ha um, <laughs> Oh man, that is wild. Who makes a blade that looks like that? Have you ever seen anything like that? So if you're not familiar, this is a obviously just on the customs. This is a, uh, a magna cut, by the way. So you can see that etched in there, magna cut. And they call this the Tanto Stinger. Stinger Tanto or Tanto Stinger, I can't remember what the order is <clears throat> officially there, but um, let's try and get some of the condensation off of here. Finished in the typical um, custom satin where you get the nice lines. And it has lines pointing in all sorts of directions because of that crazy swedge on a Tanto. That is that thing is crazy. I have never seen anything like that. That looks just like the first thing that comes to mind is like a diamond or something. It is mineral like. <laughs> um, what a wild, wild knife. Um, this is uh, the scales are fat carbon. So Demco started to play around with that. And then it has some, I think you'd call it like a bronze or a brass colored backspacer and hardware. And then you've got, uh, I think it's titanium. Yeah, titanium, green titanium pocket clip. It's a very low pocket clip. And I imagine that's because this knife's probably more focused on being handled than pocketed. But man, it could be an amazing carry hold. The feel of that is crazy. That is so good. That might be the most ergonomic knife I've ever had in my hand. No, nah, I can't quite say that, but it's definitely the most ergonomic Demco I've had in my hand. I want to show you, maybe, I may be off on this, but it feels like, it looks pretty similar. Why does it feel so good? I don't know. Maybe all the Demcos feel good. It's probably just because it's like cold and I kind of feel the shape of it more in there. But it feels really good in the hand. That thing just feels like it could uh, be run through a wall. So you got a little bit of uh, bling on the hardware there too on the uh, thumb stud, which is cool. Um, in a lot of the 8020 and 8020 custom, you have a black shark lock backing there, which is kind of cool. Of course, the action is just brilliant. And it's very new, so 
still warming up, but that thing is insane. That's the most insane looking knife I have in my collection, I think. Like my Medford's pretty ridiculous, but that is a, that's a wild one right there, man. Um, let's pull out some of the others. So I recently got this, uh, I now have three customs, plus, you know, a lot of 8020s that are like kind of what I call semi-custom. They're not customs in this way. They're machine ground, but in a way they're made in the U.S. and they're like semi-custom. They're not like readily available in stores and stuff. But this is the Day Glow from Blade Show 2021. Also Magna Cut, and you can really see that this is one of the original ones because it's like hand carved in there. So that's a pretty wild duck right there. Um, not your run of the mill pocket knife to say the least. Let me see where, maybe this one goes right here. And then you can tell these two are more recent because they have this versus the, the yellow ones got this box, which they sell the 8020s in and stuff, the 8020s in. These more recent ones on the customs, they're putting these really nice sort of wool. I don't know if they're actually wool. It's either wool or wool, synthetic wool pouches in. And then you got this, uh, uh, of course I screwed up, but the no, uh, the, the peanut, no thumb stud. And this one, I don't know what the exact shape is there, if they call it the slicer or if it's a drop point, clip point. I don't think it's what they call like the whale shark or whatever. They've got all sorts of funny names for some of these custom ones that aren't typical knife shapes. For instance, the, the Tanto Stinger, but this sort of rounded it off for me. I wanted a titanium one. Uh, I got the one, like this is, I could not, this is so good for me. Like there's some really wild titanium ones and this one's just wild enough where I really love the look of this knife. Love the satin finish, love the blade shape, love the peanut. Like this is such a cool one for me for the um, titanium. It's exactly exactly what I wanted. So glad that one worked out. This one is like I wanted the Stinger Tanto. I actually saw one in titanium and the same seller and we didn't work it out. And so like when I talked to him about this, he uh, he made a very reasonable uh, deal with me to make this one work. But this thing, I just got to keep looking at it. This thing is crazy. So it has anodized, I think, anodized titanium liners in it uh, beneath the fat carbon, which is kind of interesting because there are knives that Demco does, like the G10 uh, in the 8020, that don't have liners in it. So that's kind of interesting that it has liners. I don't know if that's done for the flare of it or because they don't want to do the fat carbon by itself or what, but the fat carbon has this, oh, I just forgot the name of it, but it has this texturing to it too. See if I can get like a good angle on that so you can really see it, but there's this really cool texturing in there um, that gives the knife just a phenomenal feel in the hand, especially now that it's warming up here inside. It's not as cold. It feels so good. And I will say like, so much better to me in hand than the typical standard carbon uh, carbon fiber Demco 8020.5 or 8020S. These are great also, and these are actually uh, full carbon the whole way through. Oh, this one has a liner in it, but the 8020S rather has a full full carbon. The 8020.5 has a liner. Um, this one just feels so good. It's like an amazing mix of like smooth and grippy. Like you'd never feel like this would fall out of your hand. I really hope he does some production knives. He's doing this fat carbon on the 8022, which if you're not familiar is a custom, at least for now it's a custom uh, US made version of the 8020.5 or size of the 8020.5 that has a peanut, no, no thumb stud. And they were really cool. They caught my eye for sure. I haven't had a chance to buy one of those yet, but I'd like to if it all manifests itself. Um, but this fat carbon on 8020 is just so cool. Um, here is the jimping uh, on these two knives. And then let me see if I can, without banging things together, show you the jimping. So there's one of the things I've noticed with uh, Demco, whether it's the production, well, we'll call it production, but 8020S machine ground or the customs, is you never know which jimping you're going to get. And I kind of love that. Um, these are all three great jimping from a functionality perspective and all three stylistically different. So I've got two 
that are kind of more recent. I think this one, this one might also be Blade Show 2021. I got to go double check where this one came from. Maybe it was Blade Show 2022. Um, and then this one's Blade Show 2021 for sure, because I know the source of it. Um, and this one's the Nashville. Man, that is, that fat carbon's super cool. If I were to make this a user though, I'd want that blade on this like handle. That'd be for me like a, the best all around of the bunch here. I don't mind the feel of the G10 in hand. It's it's good, but that's like really kind of nice in hand. Uh, the G10 is good in hand too. It's very, very good in hand. But this is like, you feel like you got something special in your hand. Um, super cool. Let's do a little bit of a weigh in here and see what kind of craziness we got going on across this uh, little series of Demcos. Demco Customs at that. And these are certainly not uh, not designed to be uh, pocket carry, I would say. I don't know about that. I'd say for the right person, hard use, maybe you do go for a Demco like this for a, a day to day, you know, to each their own. But I wouldn't say that they're optimized for weight in pockets. That one's six ounces was actually pretty reasonable. It's not light. I've got knives that are one and a half ounces, but it's not crazy. So that's 6.35, which is also very reasonable, which is what I was kind of feeling there was that it felt like that actually could be a user for someone. And then, I mean, all of these could, technically. This one goes air because my scale goes to seven ounces. Uh, I got another scale that goes up higher, but wasn't uh, planning to do this video for a weigh-in, <clears throat> or do a weigh-in on this video, rather. Um, so yeah, very uh, happy with what I'm seeing here. The blade shape is a wild one. It's not like a what I'd call the most functional. It's certainly a good functional, like, tactical knife shape I'd say but from a maintenance perspective one of the things I'll actually call out here that I didn't even notice as I was buying it or looking at it is that that is sharpened from here all the way to the end which is pretty cool that's pretty badass like you know it doesn't have like a separate edge on it here the edge starts up here which would make it a real interesting knife to try and sharpen <laughs> Um, whereas here you do have like a, um, what's the term, uh, micro bevel, I guess. Can't remember what the exact term is. And then you have a little sharpening choil there. The forward choil's a little uncomfortably close to the knife, but not bad. I just know how sharp this is and it scares me a little bit to use it. So I would stay back here on this one. I think the balance point's pretty good here anyways. The knife feels super balanced. Like there's some knives you get in your hand and you're like, I don't know where the balance point is on this. This one, you grab it and you're just like, I know that it's gonna balance right here. That's pretty cool. Feels really good in that sense. What a crazy wild knife. I am uh, working or talking to a local knife maker about stopping by and featuring some of his knives also um, that's located here in Bellingham. I'm really getting into a lot of the custom knives and what's possible when you don't go to do large scale production, you can do some pretty wild stuff, right? If you're not trying to appeal to the masses, um, the art of it becomes pretty unique and out there in what you can do. And this would be a phenomenal example of that where it's not gonna speak to everyone, but it's pretty hard to deny that there's some amazing engineering care and spirit in a knife like this. It's a little bit of a mix to me of future, present, and past. There's a little bit of Terminator in there, a little bit of, uh, you know, like this traditional, like I don't want to call it traditional color. It's kind of like a wild, but also traditional color. There's like a little bit of a mix to me in the color scheme of like, forward and backward. It's not like too insane, but it's not like definitely pretty wild. <clears throat> like compared to this, pretty insane. Um, 
what a cool knife. Kind of go find out what the texturing is called. They basically hand carve out, or maybe it's a machine, but they carve out all these little lines in here, um, which is pretty cool. My brother's father-in-law made a lot of his own knives for uh, for making uh, knives and tools for making totem poles in the Squim, Washington area. And um, I'm hoping to go spend some time with him at his house too and get to feature some of what he built and how he used those and stuff in, in producing uh, very authentic Native American style totem poles um, that ranged from, you know, five feet all the way up to 50 feet tall. In some cases, they were as wide as six feet wide. Uh, the uh, At least the, the trees that they came out of, the logs they came out of were as wide as six feet wide. <clears throat> But it's just amazing, like there's such a wide variety of things in knives, right? You have anything from, I don't really have anything on the table here that represents it, but like a run-of-the-mill flipper, like automatic, you know, someone's using it for self-defense. Now, probably not this mini one here so much, but, you know, generally there's that element of the knife world. You got the Victorinox element of the knife world. Uh, you've got, you know, something like a bug out that's really designed for a single blade carry. Um, and then you get something like this on this other end of the spectrum that's just uh, pretty mind-blowing um, and just speaks a little bit of a different language, I'd say. So pretty neat what uh, sort of things exist in this knife world and you know, a lot of the innovation drives innovation, even if it's incremental in some cases. People will see things and you'll see little design cues that carry over from one knife to another. Um, whether it's a blade shape or a, you know, a, a different uh, type of scale or a texture on the scales um, or some sort of engineering or a lock style. Um, and a lot of the makers learn from each other. They are inspired by each other and they inspire each other. And I think that's a really cool element of this world and what becomes possible because of the the element of inspiration. So, um, neat knife. Again, one I'm gonna have to sort of digest how it fits into my world. Is it just a safe queen? Is it something that I keep long term and so on? But I had to get my hands on it. I had to uh, include it in the world of Demco video that I'll be doing coming up here. And, uh, and then we'll see what the future holds for this little beauty. But hope you enjoyed the video. If not, feel free to comment and tell me what you prefer to see on the channel. Please like, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one. Take care.